Today we're looking at a required practical for AQA GCSE Biology, um, which is basically the preparation of microscope slides to observe animal, which in this case is the human epith cheek epithelial cells, and plant cells, which is the onion cells, which we'll look at in due course. What we need for this practical, I mean, I know that you, many of you have done this already in prep school, just wanna make sure we're on the same page and we call things the right way and that we address all the different possible questions that may come up. First things we need, a slide from my slide dispenser, a cover slip, which is another small piece of glass. The cover slip goes on the slide, slip and slide. There you go, easy way to remember the stuff. So the slip goes on the slide. What is the point of the slip? The point of the slip is to secure the specimen onto the slide, but also to ensure that the specimen doesn't end up touching your lenses. So we have a cover slip, we have our slide ready to go. We have some disinfectant because I'm going to be in my cheek cells and you know, gross. And then after that, we have a stain, which we will use to make what are pretty much transparent cells become a bit more visible. So this adds contrast to our image and helps to, methylene blue in particular, helps to stain nuclei. So the nucleus becomes much more visible as well. So here we go, cotton bud at the ready, buccal cavity, which is the inside of the cheek. Scraping the epithelial cells off. I'm then going to put that straight onto the slide, cover, um, cotton bud straight into the disinfectant. Then one drop of the stain, all you need. Cover slip straight on. Now, thing to be careful about the cover slip, if it goes on straight away, you can add some air bubbles, which will make things look a bit more difficult. So what we're gonna use is this technique where we use a mounted needle to rest the cover slip on, and then we lower it slowly onto the bubble. So step one, we approach the liquid with the cover slip. Step two, we rest the cover slip on the mounted needle, and we slowly lower the mounted needle and then take it away. And then we have a perfectly made slide, if I do say so myself. Excess fluid, as you can see, gathering around the outside of the cover slip then can be taken away using some absorbent filter paper. I work with in that sense. That goes a bit. And that's ready to go under the microscope. So let's have a look first of all at our light microscope, which we'll be using to look at our specimens today. We have the eyepiece lens at the very top, this section there. We then have the objective lenses and using the magnification written on there and there together, we can calculate certain magnifications that we might be using. So if you look closely there, you will see that it says that it has a 10x magnification. We then multiply that with whatever the objective lens is we're using to look at the specimen. So for example, this has the number four written there. So four times 10, 40, which means that you're using a 40 times magnification to look at the specimen. Also, it then goes up by to 10 and 40. So 10 times 10, 100, 40 times 10, 400 times magnified. And that's the maximum that this particular microscope can go to. We then have what is called here the stage, which is where the light shines through uh, and the specimen sits on. And these are our clamps to keep this slide in place. So the best thing to do is to lower it first, lower the stage. We then put our slide that we have prepared onto the stage and then clamp it as such. We then raise the stage to its highest possible point, And then we look at it, turn it on look through it 
and try to find an image as best as possible. How do we do that? We do that by lowering using the coarse adjustment knob. And then once we start to see an image, we then use the fine adjustment knob to get a nice focus on there. Once that is done, you can then draw your image and have a look. Other fun things to do with the microscope, you then have a diaphragm control here, where you can control how much light is being let through your stage from the light source at the bottom. I will now attempt to locate the image, and then we'll use a phone camera, I hope this will work, in order to show you how the image changes as we go along, and then show you how, why we would use different objective lenses and how we come to the best image possible before we So as you can see, I'm now on the lowest power objective lens with the stage at its highest possible location. This will then allow me to see the greatest field of view because it is the lowest magnification, so I have the widest field of view. I can then zoom in once I notice where all my cells are located. So first of all, let's adjust with a course adjustment until it becomes a bit clearer so I can see all the cells there very nicely. Uh, I can also see that by, I have an air bubble there which just shows that my technique is not the most perfect. But here we, we go. I, I have now seen quite a few cells. I'm going to center this cell in there and then change to a more higher magnification. I will now use just the fine adjustment knob. And there I've got some beautiful cells. I then can zoom in one more time with a highest power objective to be able to see the cell in our own. Not quite lost it. Aha. Now to go there we go, that's a nice one. And there I have my cell with the nucleus. I will now use the needle that's on the eyepiece to demonstrate to you where the nucleus is located. Just at the tip of that needle there. And there we go. An animal cell, high nicely found with the nucleus clearly stained with methylene blue. Next, we're looking at a plant cell slide preparation. So we're going to look at onion, which is our plant. We're then going to use a different stain this time. We're going to be using iodine. Okay, so once again, slide in readiness. And cover slip, ready to go. If you just cut a small section of this, We'll then be able to use just a small thin layer of the onion. Perhaps using a pair of tweezers. As you can see, the thinner the section, the better, because light needs to pass through the specimen. So we're taking a very thin layer of the film here out. There we go. A nice thin layer of onions cells there. I'm just going to take a little bit of it actually. This is quite a lot. Then I'm going to put that onto our sl uh, slide. Stretch it out. Ensure that the we have just a single layer of cells. I'm going to drop the iodine onto it. Cover slip on again, same technique. We approach the bubble. We lower it. So we have a nice so layer. So just another look again at the thing. We use iodine. A thin section of the onion is prepared, a bit too big for our slide there, so just tearing it open there. And then I stretch it onto the slide using the mounted needle to make sure it's nice and thin and not fixed. It makes the cover slip rest flat against it. Oops. Uh, a couple drops of iodine. Approach lower gently with the thing to reduce air bubbles being made, and voila.
So now we're looking at the onion cell. I've loaded the onion cell slide onto the microscope. Uh, again, using the lowest power objective lens first because it has the largest field of view um, to allow me to see exactly where I am. Using the coarse adjustment knob, I can then lower the stage. Ooh, dear, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Let me just adjust that a bit. There we go. So I would now adjust it to make me find the cells very clearly. As you can see, a large field of view, plenty of cells. I don't want to draw that many cells. So I'm just going to zoom in. So that's now 100 times magnified. I'm going to use the fine adjustment knob to make it clearer. And then I'm going to use, go in again to my largest magnification, which is 400 times magnified. It's a bit of a full-on cell there, isn't it? And there we go. There we have a couple of cells in view. Beautiful. Let me find why that's nice enough for us to draw. Actually, it's a bit too zoomed in with my phone camera, so I'm just going to go back to the 100 times magnified and get you guys to draw something similar to that. Well, there we go. And as you can see, I will show you again the nuclei are very clearly draw clearly seen there. There's my needle resting close enough ah, to a nucleus, as you can see.